All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abigail Fernandez, and today I'll be going over the midterm review for Anatomy 2. So this review will cover modules 1 through 3. This would focus on the cardiovascular system, blood, blood vessels, circulation, the heart, the lymphatic, and the immune system. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with our blood function. So let me share my screen here. Okay, so we have functions of blood. <clears throat> So there's a helpful mnemonic to remember this. It is the functions of oxygen, nutrients, hormones, defense, on, and repair. So an, on HDR. So oxygen transport, so blood delivers oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. An example of this is after you exercise, your muscles need more oxygen, so your blood delivers it, right? Then we have nutrients and hormone transport. So blood basically carries that nutrients like glucose and hormones, um, hormones like insulin. So for an example, when you eat nutrients from the food, they're absorbed into the blood and they deliver to your cells. And then homeostasis. So again, homeostasis, that word is going back to that normality. So whatever that normality is for your patient. So blood restricting of fluid losses at injury sites by forming clots. So whenever you cut your finger or um, you cut some part of your body, uh, blood forms a scab to stop that bleeding. And then we have defense. So defense, so blood fights infection through um, white blood cells. So an example of this would have, if you have a bacterial infection, so your white blood cells, they attack that bacteria. And then repair. So blood carries the materials necessary for that wound healing. Um, so after surgery, blood kind of helps bring back those platelets and repair that tissue, okay? So on HDR, so remember that little mnemonic. Okay, so plasma composition. So let's discuss plasma composition. So a helpful mnemonic for this is WEP. So um, W-E-P, WEP. So water makes up that 90% of that plasma. So staying hydrated ensures that the blood has enough of that water to flow smoothly. So electrolytes, so this helps maintain that pH and muscle function. So including um, like sodium and potassium. So after you sweat, you lose a lot of those electrolytes. So you end up having a muscle cramp um, if all of those are not replenished. And then we have P for protein. So these are important blood clotting defenses. So such as albumin and fibrogen. So fibrogen helps form those clots whenever you get injured. Okay. Now let's go ahead and look into plasma proteins. So plasma proteins are necessary to maintain that osmotic pressure in the blood. So an example of this is if albumin, our plasma protein, is low, fluid leaks from the blood vessels causing it to swell. So remember, anything that is swelling or if you see um, your patients, they have a lot of, um, their legs are a little swollen, that is edema, okay? Edema is that medical term. Now, moving on to RBCs or red blood cells. So a mnemonic to remember the RBCs is red cells are born every four months. So since RBCs live about for 120 days, um, if your body isn't making new RBCs fast enough, you could become anemic, okay? So RBCs every four months or 120 days hemoglobin. So a good way to remember the function of hemoglobin is hemo O2 CO2. So hemoglobin transports oxygen or your O2 from the lungs to tissues and carbon dioxide CO2 from the tissues back to the lungs. So an example of this is when you're running, your body uses oxygen faster. So hemoglobin works harder to deliver those O2 muscles to bring back that CO2. Okay. Now our white blood cells. So a mnemonic for this is our WBC is we build cells of immunity. So WBCs are responsible for producing those antibodies to fight off infections, okay? So when you get the flu shot, your WBCs, they create antibodies to protect you from the flu virus. 
we have two um, important ones that you want to focus for your midterm. So we have neutrophils. So neutrophils, they arrive first on the site of infection. So an example of this is if you get a cut, bacteria enters, neutrophils are the first WBCs to rush in and kill that bacteria. So they come to neutralize that situation, okay? Neutrophils neutralize the situation. Then we have acinophils. Acinophils increase a case of severe allergies. So they increase if um, you have an allergic reaction. So if you have an allergic reaction to pollen or uh, food, your xenophil levels will spike up to help fight off that allergen, okay? So e -cinophils. Now let's go over CBC, so complete blood count. So this measures leukocytes and thrombocytes. So leukocytes are WBCs and thrombocytes are platelets. A CBC can show you if you have low WBCs, so this would indicate that there's some sort of infection that your body's finding off or an immune disorder. And in that, we need to understand blood clots. So blood clots, so the activated plasma protein and fibrogen form those clots. So an example, if you have a patient that he has scraped their knee, so plasma proteins, they trigger those clot formation or the clot to form, to stop that bleeding, okay? All right, so now moving on to antigens in blood types. So if a patient has type B blood and so B antigens on the surface of RBC, so type B blood has B antigens. If your patient has type A, they will have A antigens. So um, those are the antigens that are present. So if someone with a B blood receives a type A blood, their immune system might attack those A antigens, okay? Now we want to discuss um, that blood transfusion. So if an AB negative patient receive, can receive O negative blood and AB negative blood. So if an AB negative patient needs blood, they can get that O negative blood because it lacks that A and B antigen, right? And it won't cause a reaction. RH factor, so resinous factor. This is if a mother is RH negative and the baby is RH positive, aristoblastosis fetal acids might develop. So for this particular patient, for future pregnancies, the mother's body might attack the baby's RBCs if it's untreated, okay? Now let's dive into veins and circulation. So remember this mnemonic, veins contain valves for one-way flow. So I want you to think of a hose, a water hose, okay? You turn it on and the water just shoots up one way, okay? So think of that whenever you're thinking of your veins. So that your valves are inside of those veins to help them go that way. So it, to, the reason why veins have valves is to prevent that blood flow of blood. So it's always going one way, okay? So blood returning from your legs, it flows upwards towards your heart. So it's helped by those valves, those little flaps that keep it from falling back down, okay? Now it's vasodilation. So what is happening with vasodilation? Vasodilation happens when the muscle of the tunica media, so media is middle, relaxes. This allows for the blood vessels to widen up, okay? So an example of this, you um, take a hot shower, your face turns super red because all the blood vessels are dilating. So this is allowing for more blood to flow on the skin, okay? Veins from upper extremity to the heart, okay? So use this mnemonic NBAs or nursing students like MBAs. So the order of this is your median cubota vein, your basilic vein, so brasso, basilic, your arm, basilic vein, your axillary, axillary is your armpit, and then your sub subclavian, subclavian vein, and then goes back to the heart, okay? So make sure you know this. So your blood from your arm goes through these veins to return back to the heart, okay? Really know that. Systolic pressure. So systolic pressure is the highest pressure against those 
artery wall. So when the heart contracts, it's the highest pressure. So if your blood pressure is 120 over 80, 110, 120 would be that systolic pressure. So it's showing the pressure of when your heart pumps. Diastolic, so think of diastolic as down, D for down. The diastolic would be the bottom number, so that would be an 80. A serious complication is deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. Um, this would be a pulmonary embolism. So if a blood clot in the leg travels through the lungs, it can block that blood flow and cause a life-threatening PE or a pulmonary embolism, okay? So um, again, patient practices, making sure your legs are elevated. Um, I know you discuss this a little bit more in class. And lastly, layers of the heart. So let's review the layers of the heart. So some superficial to deep, okay? So superficial, think of superficial. You have your soup and deep would be all the way down, okay? So superficial, you have your parietal pericardium, your visceral pericardium, myocardium, endocardium. And the way you remember that, could be um, you have your parietal, your parents, they shield you off. Your parents are always protecting you, that top layer. Then you have your visceral layer. Visceral layer is kind of like a little bag, okay? little bag that protects that layer of the heart. And then you have your myocardium. Your myocardium is that middle layer, myo-middle, and that's your muscle layer. And then your endocardium, so endo is inside. So endo is a bottom layer, okay? So your deepest layer. So an example, if your myocardium or your muscle la layer, your middle layer gets damaged during a heart attack, it affects that heart's ability to pump, okay? So make sure you know that. Um, I hope this um, review kind of helped clarify some concepts. If you um, have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments, or if you have any suggestions, um, any different things that you would like to see, um, or if you have any questions, let me know if you, this video was helpful. Um, put a thumbs up. Um, if there's something else that you would like to see differently, uh, let me know as well. Um, happy studying.